Hi, this is Sue. Um, just a quick recap on what I did yesterday. This first round I have put a um, sealing coat of the epoxy on. It sat on top of the Formica, very old Formica top. Um, that's because the epoxy won't stick to it uh, and it saves an awful lot of mess. At the front in front of the, the split in front of the horseshoe, um, I've got a bit of an old um, or rather an unused um, surgical glove just pushed into the end there um, because I don't want all the resin to be running out and that is enough to hold it and again without sticking and that tiny little bit I'm going to be able to just tart up a little bit with some finishing oil so that it doesn't really look different to the rest of the uh, the table or the split. So that's that one. Um, this one I have here ready. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to have enough resin left, whether I'll decide to just add it to the flood coat that I'm doing on the first one, or whether I'm going to have enough that's overly left that I can just whap on as a, a quick sealing coat. Um, it is important to make sure that your um, work area is level um, it is a self-leveling compound. I use glass cast. Um, it's a self-leveling compound and if you don't have the top level or the part that you're going to be putting the epoxy onto, it's all going to run off one end and pool. So that's just a very quick recap on what I've done yesterday and I will talk to you again later when I have someone here to hold the camera for me while I do the flood coat. Cheers guys, bye. I use glass cast and this is the sizes that I buy as five kilo. Um, it comes in, of course, liquid form. Um, some people actually measure by weight. I measure by um, containers. The little container being the one that I use and the big pint plastic cup is where I combine the two and get them mixed cover your worktops it's very very mucky messy stuff i also use surgical gloves and you can see on there is a spreader ready for me to do my flood coat on that first round that we were looking at it's also very important to have a fairly dust free environment this is about as clean as i can get it in here and the minute that this stuff is set then it will go back to looking like a workshop rather than something that some that nobody ever uses. And uh, that's it for now, guys. Very short one. Just talking about what I use. Oh, before we go away, I did this um, ceiling coat yesterday. And if I zoom the camera in, you may just be able to see there. There are some fish eyes. I don't know whether you can see them or not just little marks let's try over here marks in the surface this is caused because i have used um boiled linseed oil on the other sides to help prevent the rounds from cracking as they dry uh, i was always going to have the big one i started with it the boiled linseed oil has gone right through the wood and is causing the glass cast to slide off the areas where it's pooled on the wood so today i've just put a little tiny bit of finishing oil onto those fish eyes so that hopefully fingers crossed they'll disappear when i do the flood coat cheers guys bye for now have you pushed it yeah yeah okay this is sue here again with um colleague amanda who is very kindly taking this video and we'll get on with it this is the epoxy resin not the hardener and it's going to be measured out in this little container up to the line four times just to get the flood coat for the small round cedar and it finally starts stop it again so we put four measures of the small pot into the pint pot and now we're doing the hardener
this pint pot's a little bit over full here but gently not fast mixing because if you do you'll get loads and loads of bubbles in it but you need to get these two parts very very well mixed and you only have at maximum 30 minutes to both mix and put onto your piece of wood so well mixed now and spreading it as regularly as I can around Pop that in there for a minute. Personally, I like to use the flat edge, although you are always advised to use the serrated. Um, and I used to use a credit card. I just find it easier in the first instance to spread it out like this. I can feel then where I'm missing. And we are now very much on a time limit, having used a good seven minutes actually combining and mixing. Make sure that you get it round to the edges, you want it to be rolling off down the sides. Making sure that every little bit is covered. And while we're talking about this, just to give everybody a reminder, Please, please, please take every little bit of equipment that you've used, your mixing pots, any rags that you might have used to wipe up, outside, take them out of the workshop because they generate enormous heat and have been known to start fires. So there's your warning guys. Off yeah. So we've got the, the gas fired up on a very low setting to very quickly just flash over the top to help bring up and pop any air bubbles. We're still within our 30 minute timeline but we've got just a few minutes left and that one actually looks very good and I'm going to leave it at that. The second round, we did just put a, a ceiling coat on. I've just applied the flood coat to this uh, round and I've got about 10 minutes left of work time. You will see that it's still actually quite uneven. This is when you have to leave it alone. It will level out, have faith. Don't mess with it because getting so close to the end point here if you start messing with it, you end up with what I had earlier, which is why I've had to re-coat this one. Go around the sides, it, it'll drip down. Go around the sides with your fingers, obviously in gloves. Just rub it into the side grain. And try and catch any uh, big loops that are underneath the wood that are pooling into nice icicles for you. You can get rid of those when this is fully dry, but the less you have, the better. Um, just moving to the side here, this is the one that I have now flood coated. I'm very happy with the way that this one's turned out and I'm not going to mess with it again other than just finishing tidying around the bottom and putting its legs on. What I didn't talk to you in the, about in the last one is that once I've got to this point with the flood coat, I'm going to start using a gas lamp. Um, torch on it on a very very low setting this will help to bring out the bubbles and another correction from my previous video is do not use um, for my underneath your rounds or whatever you're coating it does stick to it <laughs> so <laughs> the person that gave me that information was incorrect it will not stick to perspex however so that's a good one if you can get a hold of some per perspex Okay guys, I'm going to just flash it now and I will attempt to hold the torch and video as I go.